You're listening to The Joe and Rosa Show, proclaiming the gospel through word and through song. Hi, and welcome to The Joe and Rosa Show. I'm Joe. And I'm Rosa. And with us today, we have a blogger and speaker, Lindsay Alexander. How are you today, Lindsay? I'm great. How are you guys? We are doing just fine. And now, before we started the show, I, I was very interested in what you said God used to actually propel you into taking steps towards the ministry. You'd had a panic attack. And um, could you tell us a little bit more about what that was, what happened, and how God used that to uh, start your ministry? Sure. So I, um, I think it's important to know that I started a relationship with the Lord when I was seven and completely just fell in love with Jesus. And so through the, the course of my life have have um, just seen his grace in my life and his the amazing forgiveness and the way he has just provided so many tangible evidences um, in my life. And he was, was and is completely my Lord and Savior. But we had lived, my husband and I and our three kids, in Charlotte, North Carolina for 10 years. And I was a professional photographer at the time, um, and God moved us through a relocation to Raleigh, North Carolina, which was only about three and a half hours away, but it felt like we were moving to China. (laughs) We were leaving our comfy, cozy bubble. We were leaving our church family. We were leaving our actual family um, and leaving a place where we were, for all intents and purposes, very comfy. And we moved to Raleigh. It completely knew it was something God was calling us to. And there was a just a, an underlying current of just kind of this adventure that he was creating and um, a call to something else that we kind of knew was around the corner, but we didn't know what that was. It was just a feeling that we had. It was being verified in our prayer life. And so we moved. Well, about three months in, uh, I just really struggled with the move. I missed our, I missed comfortable, and I really felt like he was kind of having a circle the wilderness a little bit. And it was in October of last year that I had this massive panic attack. We didn't know if I was having a stroke or a heart attack. I'd never had a panic attack before, and ended up calling nine one one and. They were testing me for a heart attack and a stroke. Um, my blood pressure was crazy, and after a ton of tests, a night in the ER, seeing specialists, I had a doctor sit me down and say, you know, we really think all of this was just a huge panic attack that you had. And this sweet doctor looked at me and said, you know, sometimes our bodies will manifest on the outside what's happening internally. And just those words were were huge to me. And I thought, you know, I really thought that I was walking through um, situations in my life and this move with my hands completely wide open. When the truth was, I was really white-knuckling things to death. And so through that panic attack, it was just God just lovingly uncurling each one of my fingers and saying, you know, really, Lindsay, the, t- the degree to which I can use you is the measure of which your hands are open. And I want you to be on board with whatever I put in your path, and I want you to to trust me. And I have a great plan for you. I have a great adventure for your life. And it's going to be really cool if you open those hands completely up and be open for whatever. And so through that journey... Um, the underlying current and the thread that God had just been writing over my whole life since I was seven culminated to, what are your gifts? You know, I, I love to write. I love words. I think they're powerful. I love to share the truth of what God's done in my life. I love to share the really hard things, too, where I've seen God become victorious through really hellish situations. And so it was just taking a step in obedience to do the next hard thing and to just take little baby steps and following him wherever that was. And so I literally just started writing a blog um, about the journey, and it's been really cool to see how those little steps, when your hands are open, become really cool things. Yes, absolutely. What a powerful testimony. And so um, you, you also embraced a lifestyle of less is more, and I would love to hear how that ties in with the overall um, adventure that God was having you on, having your your hands open and expectancy, and just sort of 
tell us a little bit about what is that? What does that look like and, and how God has been working through that? Sure. So when we were living in Raleigh, my husband had gone on a mission trip to Columbia, South America, and was able to just see how people were living in, you know, in a pretty impoverished area of Columbia. And he just related so much with these families and with these men and what they were trying to do and providing for their family and, and all the joy that they had and the freedom they had because they, because they had less tangible items, you know, because they were clinging less to the stuff. And so God really started to work on his heart. And then when he returned, through conversation, and God started to really work on my heart, and we both looked at each other and just said, you know, there's something about having less stuff. Less stuff because we want to be good stewards of every inch. Less stuff because that means we have more finances to help people. More Less stuff because we could go out with a family and pay for dinner. Less stuff because, you know, it could all go in a fire, and it's just things. And so, and, and just less stuff because we want to be able to be mobile for God and whatever that means. And so it was something our family specifically just felt really called to. And ironically, it was put to the test because we had been living in Raleigh and out of nowhere came an opportunity to move to Columbia, South Carolina, which is about four and a half hours from Raleigh. And so, again, it was, okay, are your hands open? Like, are you open <laughs> to moving? Are you open to this adventure? And so we were, you know, God, I think, sometimes puts a message in you because he's going to ask you to walk it. And so we were on board with that. And so when we moved to Columbia, we sold a ton of our stuff and scaled down and, you know, went from a two-story large house to a, an older fixer-upper ranch that we're living in. And it's been pretty cool to just see how the the wanting less is, is really a neat place to be and what it affords us to be able to do as we're good stewards of every inch of the things that he's given us. Yeah, you know, I think that's absolutely powerful because our American culture is all about consumerism and status, oh, yeah. and it's expressed by who has the most toys, who has the most stuff. And right. so going counterculture to that, it's it's amazing how God is able to work through it and use it. And basically what you're saying, what you expressed here is that he is blessing people through your life that is uncluttered and basically available for him to be able to do that. And um, so as far as the, the I'm, I'm curious if there's somebody listening on the other side that, that thinks that maybe, maybe my life is too cluttered and I'm not really able to help people. I, I might even be in debt because I'm paying for all of this stuff. Um, what, what sort of steps did you find that you were able to take to sort of uh, clear things away so that God really had space, the space that he needed to move and work in your life? Yeah, I think, I mean, it is so hard. You know, when we've had the things, it's hard to then take some steps backward towards less. Um, and, you know, for our family, it really just started with surveying the actual stuff that we had. You know, what what are things that are unnecessary? What are things that are excess? What are things that, I mean, truthfully, we never even use? And just starting to go through and purge those items, sell those items, give those items away. And it was amazing to see over the course of just that little project how things started to scale down. But I think for us, truly, it was a heart. It was a heart issue. You know, we. Um, I'm a, I'm a girl. Like I love getting on Pinterest. I love seeing <laughs> beautiful homes, and I love. I mean, like I love that, and I still think that is kind of a desire in my heart and parts of it that are not are not um, something that God would frown upon. I think there's think gifts almost that He's put in me, creative ways to to create a home and cultivate um, an atmosphere for anybody that steps into our house. But I think it it was kind of becoming an idol, the thing, you know, and the hunt for the thing, you know, and the desire and kind of the looking over the fence and seeing what other people have and coveting that, you know, that became a real underlying issue if I was honest with myself. So I think my advice would just be honestly pray for a change of heart. Pray that God would, would start to shine a light on the things that you are, are holding really tightly to. Um, 
and, and take little baby steps of just removing clutter in a closet, removing, you know, clutter in your kitchen, things that aren't used. And I think you, as you start to scale it down, you start to visually see how much less you really need. Um, and our, you know, like we haven't gone drastic, you know, I mean, we, we didn't go from our house to, you know, living in a tiny house, you know, we, there's, there's five of us in our family and a dog, so there was still a need for, for space, but just, I think it was changing the filter by which we viewed stuff and the hunt for stuff. Um, so that we weren't living paycheck to paycheck and we weren't running up credit cards and we weren't, you know, you know, running out of money at the end of the month and we couldn't, it was just, it was just a heart change. And I think God, God is completely available and wanting us to just be willing to be changed. Well, you know, that's, I find that fascinating. Rosa and I had moved from a larger home to a smaller home and kind of by necessity had to do the same thing, get rid of a lot of things. And we found it was easier to live with, with less. But what I found uh, interesting when we, when we did that was it's, it's fascinating the things you end up getting rid of before you wouldn't have considered certain things. But when you really take a look at it, it, it's interesting the things that really are necessary and the things that really aren't. So, uh, how did how did you have to uh, go through that and really kind of shake out what was needed in your life and, and what you could do without? Yeah, I um, a cool story behind that. We um, the Hurricane Matthew situation out here in the South was a big deal, and we had a lot of friends from the Charleston area who were coming up to Columbia, where we now live, to evacuate, and everything that they could bring fit in a car. And for me, that was huge because I thought. Everything that's important fit into one vehicle, and that's kind of a that's kind of a perspective shift when you think when you leave things behind, all that you need can fit in a car. And so for us, it was really looking at what what are the necessary things in our home that make a that make our home functional, a that make our home available to other people. And so, it, you know, I think it was kind of almost a necessity thing for us, too, because we, we were moving to a smaller house, um, but our heart was just looking at the stuff different um, and repurposing things, you know, looking at stuff that we had and could it be used in a different way than how we've been using it. So I think for us, it's, it's just it's constantly running it through that filter. And it's a struggle. I mean, I'll be honest. There's, I'm still... I'm still a lover of Pinterest. I'm still a lover of this stuff. So I have to really constantly put myself in check and, and pray through the mm -hmm. wanting. Because um, I think owning less is something, but wanting less is even a bigger thing. Absolutely. And I, I will tell you, because our house is really small, um, we purchased it. I wasn't a Christian at the time because it had land, and but the house mm -hmm. itself is small. And so... I love Pinterest and sometimes for stuff that is is more than what I can afford or can have I just kind of dream like as if it were real I don't know it just kind of <laughs> I just like what to enjoy do, right? <laughs> yeah I enjoy it it used to be a, a, a point of covetousness that I used to feel frustrated because I couldn't now I try to enjoy just looking at the pictures but so yeah. um, can you tell our listeners where they can find you online and where they can find your blog sure so everything is all in one location. It's Lin it's just www.lindsayalexanderblog.com, and it's Lindsay with an A. So L-I-N-D-S-A-Y, alexander.com, excuse me, lindsayalexanderblog.com, and the blog is linked there. Um, along with other ministry resources as well. All right. Well, thank you so much, for Lindsay Alexander, for being on the Joe and Rosa show today. Thank you. I loved it.